All right, good morning, everybody. Our quest continues for knowledge on all things decimal related. Rub the morning sleepies from your eyes and get ready for lesson 68. We're all about naming decimal numbers today. So, just like everything else, when you're naming numbers, it is all about the place value. And you should be remembered with what I call the no name group the ones, the tens, the hundreds. And we've explored it all the way going left. The next one was the thousands, one thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand. But we're getting familiar with the places to the right of the decimal point now. And we just call those the decimal numbers. Remember the tenths place. Decimals are just ways of representing something that is less than one whole. So tenths place would be like a dime. There are ten tenths in one dollar. Or the hundredths place, which we said is like a penny. Now we have one more for you, the thousandths place. And believe it or not, that actually has a coin that you don't usually see too often. It is one-tenth of a cent. If you go and pay attention to the gas signs, the gas prices will also include what we call mills. A mill is one-tenth of a penny, and it represents the thousandths group. So let's jump right into it right now, and we might have to make our peace with some problems like this. Here it is saying, the door was... 2.032 meters tall. Write the height of the door as both a fraction and with words. Let's use our handy dandy place value decimal chart here and let's see what we're up against. We have two and then a decimal point and then a zero and a three and then a two, right? So, name the number, name the group. I have two in the no name, so I'm just going to say two. And now I got to say the whole decimal number two and 32 thousandths. So, if I was going to write that as a fraction or a mixed number, the whole number two, 32 is going to be my numerator. And a thousand going to be my denominator, right? So two and thirty-two thousandths. Let's go ahead and do this guy in words then now. So I'm just going to go ahead and write two and thirty-two thousandths. The trickiest part about this job is remembering how to spell thousandths. Take a look here. Now it's asking us to use digits to write as a decimal number. They're giving you the word form, right? So I have 30 and 1 tenth. So I'm going to have 30 over here in my no name group. There's 30. Now I'm going to write in my decimal point for the and. And I have 1 in the tenths place. So I'm just going to slide a 1 right here. Three zero decimal one thirty and one tenth. We're gonna do it all over again, only now they're asking us one hundred two and two hundredths. So, first of all, I gotta take care of my no name numbers. I have one hundred two, we should all know how to write that a one, a zero. And a two, right? One hundred two decimal point for the and. And now I need two in the hundreds place. So what do you imagine I'm gonna put here in my blank tenths? That would be a zero. One hundred two and two hundredths. We're going to do it one more time using digits and, uh-oh, I don't have an and this time. It just says 12 thousandths. 
So I got to get 12 ending in the thousands place. And you can only put one digit per line at a time. So I better put one in the hundreds place and a two in the thousandths place because it has to end on the correct name. So what do you imagine we're going to put here in the tenths place? Just a zero. And even though we don't read it zero and twelve thousandths because nothing is the same as zero, I am going to write a zero here. When I put it in number form, using digits, I do want to start with a zero. I don't have to say it. Saying nothing is the same as zero. We're just going to go and call it 12 thousandths. Now we're going to go and try it in the opposite direction. It says to use words, right? So I have 26 in my no-name group, so I'm just going to go and call this 26 decimal point, so I'm going to type in and, and now I have a 3 and a 2, that number is pronounced 32, right? 32 what? I got my 3 here, my 2 here, so it's 32 hundredths. 26 and 32 hundredths. We'll try it again here. I'm not going to pronounce this number 0 and 137 thousandths, saying nothing is the same as zero, right? So I can just go ahead and name the number. I have a one, a three, and a seven. We should know that number is called 137, right? 137, the one is here, the three is there, the seven is right there in the thousands place. 137 thousandths. One more time with feeling. Use words to write this guy. What do I have here in the no name group? That looks like 100. So let's go ahead and type that in. 100. Decimal point is pronounced and. And now the name of this number on the decimal side is also 1. I have a 0 right here in the tenths place. That 1 is right here in the hundredths place, right? 100 and 100th. Check out this guy. Name the shaded portion of the rectangle as a mixed number. That's a whole number and a fraction. We got to do it as a decimal number and in words. It's a three for, right? So let's go ahead and try it as a mixed number right now. Looks to me like I have one whole rectangle all the way shaded, right? How many total pieces do you imagine is in this rectangle? I have 10 rows with 10 in each. 10 times 10, that looks like a hundredth to me, right? So I know my denominator is a hundredth. And let's just go and count how many of those hundred little squares are shaded red. 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33. So as a mixed number, looks to me like it's 1 and 33 hundredth. So let's go ahead and write it as a decimal number now then. How do I go and write 1 and, and I need 33 ending in the hundredths place, which it did, right? This is tenths, this is hundredths. 1 and 33 hundredths. So I got that part down. Let's go and do the last step just using words. 1 and 33 hundredths. So that wasn't too tough in word form as a mixed number and in decimal form, right? 
And that is the end. You're probably not going to need scratch paper and pencil, but you may want to use that place value chart on page 432 of your book. Good luck on your Socrative quiz.